sacraments from heretics. Saint Theodore the Studite, 759 to 826 AD. If anyone should not number with the other heresies the heresy which say that communion with heretics is a matter of indifference, he is a heretic. Pope Saint Agatho the First, 678 to 681 AD. If anyone prays with heretics, he is a heretic. Pope Saint Gelasius the First. 492 to 496 AD the toleration of heretics is more injurious than the devastation of the provinces by the barbarians. Pope Clement VIII, 1592 to 1605 AD, you priests and all my brethren must have great regard that you teach not, nor defend, that it is lawful to communicate with the Protestants in their prayers or services or in the conventicles where they meet to minister their untrue sacraments, for this is contrary to the practice of the Church and the holy doctors in all ages who never communicated or allowed any Catholic person to pray together with Arians, Donatists, or what other soever. Neither is it a positive law of the Church, for in that case it might be dispensed with upon some occasion, but it is forbidden by God's own eternal law, as by many evident arguments I could convince. To make all sure, I have asked for the judgment of the Pope currently reigning Pope Clement VIII and he expressly told me that to participate with the Protestants either by praying with them or by coming to their churches or services or such like was by no means lawful or dispensable. Pope Leo X, 1513 to 1521 AD, 5th Lateran Council, Session 8, Ex Cathedra, and since truth cannot contradict truth, we define that every statement contrary to the enlightened truth of the faith is totally false and we strictly forbid teaching otherwise to be permitted. We decree that all those who cling to erroneous statements of this kind, thus sowing heresies which are wholly condemned, should be avoided in every way and punished as detestable and odious heretics and infidels who are undermining the Catholic faith. All false Christians and those with evil sentiments towards the faith, of whatever race or nation they may be, as well as heretics and those stained with some taint of heresy, or Judaizers, are to be totally excluded from the company of Christ's faithful and expelled from any position, especially from the Roman Curia, and punished with an appropriate penalty. Pope Leo XIII, 1874-1903 AD, Satis Cognitum, from this it is easy to see that men can fall away from the unity of the Church by schism, as well as by heresy. We think that this difference exists between heresy and schism, writes St. Jerome. Heresy has no perfect dogmatic teaching, whereas schism, through some episcopal dissent, also separates from the Church, St. Hieronymus. In which judgment, St. John Chrysostom, concurs, I say and protest, he writes, that it is as wrong to divide the Church as to fall into heresy wherefore as no heresy can ever be justifiable, so in like manner there can be no justification for schism. There is nothing more grievous than the sacrilege of schism, there can be no just necessity for destroying the unity of the Church, St. Augustinus. Pope Eugene IV, 1431-1447 AD, Council of Florence, Cantate Domino, therefore the Holy Roman Church condemns, reproves, anathematizes, and declares to be outside the body of Christ, which is the Church, whoever holds, opposing or contrary views, dot. Pope Leo XIII, 1874-1903 AD, Satis Cognitum, No. 9, June 29, 1896, The practice of the Church has always been the same, as is shown by the unanimous teaching of the Fathers, who were wont to hold as outside Catholic communion, an alien to the Church, whoever would recede in the least degree from any point of doctrine proposed by her authoritative magisterium. Pope Leo XIII, 1874-1903 AD The worst kind of heretic is the one who, while teaching mostly true Catholic doctrine, add a word of heresy, like a drop of poison in a cup of water. Pope Leo XIII, 1874-1903 AD. Satis Cognitum, No. 15, June 29, 1896, It is absurd to imagine that he who is outside can command in the Church. Pope Pius IX, 1846-1878 AD. Graves A.C. Diuturni, The Serious and Long-Lasting Plots and Efforts Which the New Heretics Who Call Themselves Old Catholics but in fact they refuse to acknowledge all the divine prerogatives of the Vicar of Christ on earth and do not submit to his supreme magisterium. Pope Pius VIII, 1829-1830 AD Tradidi Humilitati, Jerome used to say it this way, he who eats the lamb outside this house will perish as did those during the flood who were not with Noah in the ark. Pope Gregory XVI, 1831-1846 AD Commissum Divinitus Whoever dares to depart from the unity of Peter might understand that he no longer shares in the divine mystery, whoever eats the lamb outside of this house is unholy. St. Thomas Aquinas, 1225-1274 AD Catechism of the Summa, Are Heretics and Schismatics Excommunicated? 
yes, they have no part in the communion of the saints. Council of Carthage, 251 to 525 AD. One must neither pray nor sing psalms with heretics, and whoever shall communicate with those who are cut off from the communion of the church, whether clergy or layman, let him be excommunicated. Three Council of Constantinople, 680 to 681 AD. If any ecclesiastic or layman shall go into the synagogue of the Jews or the meeting houses of the heretics to join in prayer with them, let them be deposed and deprived of communion. If any bishop or priest or deacon shall join in prayer with heretics, let him be suspended from communion. Council of Laodicea, 363-364 AD. Canon 33, no one shall join in prayers with heretics or schismatics. Pope Pius XI, 1922-1929 AD. Mortalium Anonymous. So, venerable brethren, it is clear why this apostolic see has never allowed its subjects to take part in the assemblies of non-Catholics. Pope St. Gregory the Great, 590-604 AD. Dialogues, rather ought everyone to submit to death, than to receive the sacrament of communion from the hand of a heretic. St. Athanasius the Great, 328-373 AD, we are bound to refrain from communing with those whose opinions we abhor. Council of Laodicea 363 to 364 AD, those who are members of the church are not to be permitted to go into the cemeteries of any of the heretics for the purpose of prayer or veneration. If they do, they are to be excommunicated. Another version says, the members of the church are not allowed to meet in the cemeteries, nor attend the so-called martyrize of any of the heretics, for prayer or service, but such as so do, if they be communicants, shall be excommunicated for a time, but if they repent and confess that they have sinned they shall be received. Pope Innocent III, 1198 to 1216 AD. Fourth Lateran Council, Constitution III, on Heretics, 1215. Moreover, we determine to subject to excommunication believers who receive, defend, or support heretics. If, however, he is a cleric, let him be deposed from every office and benefice, so that the greater the fault, the greater the punishment. If any refuse to avoid such persons after they have been pointed out by the Church, let them be punished with the sentence of excommunication until they make suitable satisfaction. Clerics should not, of course, give the sacraments of the church to such pestilent persons nor give them a Christian burial. Pope Innocent III, 1198-1216 AD, refers to this in the Fourth Lateran Council, Constitution III on heretics, if they persist in the excommunication for suspicion of heresy for a year, they are to be condemned as heretics. Pope Vigilius, 537 to 555 AD. Second Council of Constantinople, ex cathedra, the heretic, even though he has not been condemned formally by any individual, in reality brings anathema on himself, having cut himself off from the way of truth by his heresy. What reply can such people make to the apostle when he writes, as for someone who is factious, after admonishing him once or twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is perverted and sinful, he is self-condemned, Titus 3.10, dot. Titus 3.10 A man that is a heretic, after the first and second admonition, avoid. Pope Gregory 16, 1831-1846 AD, Be not deceived, my brother, if anyone follows a schismatic, he will not attain the inheritance of the kingdom of God. Pope Saint Gregory the Great, 590-604 AD. Rather ought everyone to submit to death, than to receive the sacrament of communion from the hand of a heretic. Pope Pius XII, 1939-1958 AD. For not every sin, however grave and enormous it be, is such as to sever a man automatically from the body of the Church, as does schism, heresy, or apostasy. Saint Robert Bellarmine, 1542-1621 AD, the Romano Pontifice, then two years later came the lapse of Librius, of which we have spoken above. Then indeed the Roman clergy, stripping Librius of his pontifical dignity, went over to Felix, whom they knew then to be a Catholic. From that time, Felix began to be the true pontiff. For although Librius was not a heretic, nevertheless he was considered one, on account of the peace he made with the Arians, and by that presumption the pontificate could rightly Marito be taken from him, for men are not bound, or able to read hearts, but when they see that someone is a heretic by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic pure and simple, and condemn him as a heretic. Saint Thomas Aquinas 1225 to 1274 AD, summa theologica, if anyone were to, worship at the tomb of Mohammed, he would be deemed an apostate. Rom 16 17-18, now I beseech you, brethren, 
to mark them who make dissensions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. St. John Chrysostom, 349-407 AD Judge not, and ye shall not be judged, Luke 6 37. What does this mean? Are we not to denounce those who sin? Why, then, does Paul say, Reprove, entreat, rebuke, 2 Tim 4 2, and reprove before everyone those who sin, I Tim 5 20, for if the master did not correct the servant, and the mistress the maid, and the father the son, and the friend his friend, everything would go bad, and unless we correct our enemies also, we shall never put an end to enmity, and everything would be turned upside down. Let us, therefore, carefully study the meaning of what is said here, so that no one may think that the remedies of our salvation are really laws of disorder and confusion. For our Lord has, in what follows, made as clear as possible, to those who have understanding, the perfection of this law, saying, First cast the beam out of thine own eye, Luke 6:42. you see how he does not forbid us to judge, but commands us first to remove the beam from our own eye, and only then should we correct the faults of others. St. Vincent de Paul, true Christian prudence makes us judge things as Jesus Christ judged them, and to speak and act as he did. St. Irenaeus of Lyons, judge those who forge schisms and who look to their own advantage rather than to the unity of the church. Judge as well those who are outside the bounds of truth, namely, those who are outside the church. Butler, St. Antony would not speak to a heretic, unless to exhort him to the true faith, and he drove all such from his mountain, calling them venomous serpents. St. Hermenegild, 564-585 AD, on Easter night a heretical Arian bishop was sent to him with Holy Communion, but he refused to receive even the Easter Communion from the hands of a heretic, and his father then put him to death.